All right, all right, all right, all right. I think I just let Kia in and the Zoom is uploading right now to Facebook. And there it is. And I need to turn the I sound think I just off. Let Kia in. And I need to go back to Zoom. See if that's Kia. And it is Kia, indeed. How are you? I'm well, how are you? I am hanging in there. Great. Yeah, it's good to see you. Um, you too. I'm, uh, I'm playing two videos tonight. Of course, we're a little bit early. If you're just, if you're watching the recording, it'll just be uh, a few minutes because it is 628. We'll give a people a chance to come in, but I'm gonna be starting with a video I've got two short clips. I think the first one is something like six minutes and the second one is something like nine and they are horrible, but they are perfect for discussion because the question comes to my mind all the time of, you know, how biblical is the stuff we see and believe that comes from Christian churches, Christian organizations, Christian filmmakers in this case. And um, so I'm gonna be sharing two videos and by way of negative example, I think maybe, <laughs> we might learn something. Also, the videos have some things in common, even though they're about totally different subjects. So uh, I'm looking forward to sharing that with you, Kia. You ready? You ready to rock and roll tonight? Oh, you're not on your mic anymore. Yes, I am. I'm ready. Oh, there you are. There you are. Um, uh, yeah, so how are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Mm, pretty good for an old man. <laughs> I really had fun doing the, um, on one of them, I, I typed in snide comments so you can see them on, on the screen. On the other one, I actually did kind of a, um, I don't a reaction reaction to the video. So you, I did, a, I did a, a voice recording that synchronized with the video. So I comment on it as it goes along and I just ad-libbed it. The first I started and I got about five minutes into it and it just didn't feel right. And I was behind and I said, I can do this better. I felt like Jay Leno going back and trying to make it funnier the second time. And, uh, and so I started it over and on, on take two, I said, that's gotta be good enough. This will, you know, I, it doesn't have to be perfect. And besides most people don't think I'm funny anyway. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, I am looking at the, bottom of the hour. It's about 6.30. Um, I'm expecting the rest of our panel to be here. I've heard from Gene, who is planning to be here, but I don't see him yet. Um, if, those, if you're watching on Facebook and you need the, uh, what you call it, the password or whatever it is to get in, I can give you that right now. I'm going to put it on the Facebook thing at the bottom. I'm copying it now, but it's in, it's been on every email and every message and every post all day long. So there's no excuse for not having it. I have sent that thing out there. And here is the passcode on your Facebook feed, passcode. It's capital P as in Paul. It's capital H as in horse, capital R as in Ralph, 771. That's PHR 771, just six digits and three, no, three digits and two, three letters. And I am going back to Zoom. And thank you for keeping an eye on me admitting people because I don't see it sometimes. Okay. I keep expecting it to be over here or something like, and it's gonna be green and it's always up here and it's blue. Mm -hmm. It's not always, sometimes it's down there, but yeah. I never know what it's gonna do. Hey, Miss Kia. You actually look like you're in the Bahamas. I mean, it's not. Hi. It, hey. Yes, Patricia's live from Nassau. Hello. How are you guys? Good. You want me to prove good. to you that she's not live from Nassau? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Please spoil it. It's fine. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Always good to see you, Kia. How's your family? Dang, I'm hot. I, I, could, uh, I could use a favor. Mm -hmm. I would like a soft drink, please. 
Would you, you like mind? Some running water? No, I'd rather have a full soft drink if you don't mind. Okay. I'll let you keep your water. No problem. You don't have to have any more water. <laughs> Thank you, Patricia. Um, if you're if you're just now joining us, uh, we'll be starting in a sec. I'm giving folks uh, a moment to get here. Um, and if you're listening somewhere out there right now and you're having trouble getting admitted, I see Bill. It will say Ben Hill, but he's Bill. Bill is from the community of Ben Hill, so he uses that as his pseudonym. Hey, Bill, how are you doing, man? You got your microphone on? Maybe not. Thank you, ma'am. Now I got me, I got my poison right here, Coke Zero. Um, I still don't see Jane. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, sorry, if you're watching the recording and you want to skip ahead, you can. I'll give you the minute mark when it starts so that you don't necessarily have to go through this sort of phasing in that we're doing right now. But our full panel is not here yet. And I'm wondering if they had needed the passcode again. But the passcode is on the Facebook feed. Go there and get it. It's on the Owl Rock wall in the last post I did. It's on my Bert Gary post the last one I did, and it's on your messenger and your email that I sent. So they've all got that passcode if you need it. It's PHR771. Wow, it's quiet. Where is everybody? We had a crowd last week. Maybe we're not going to have a crowd this week. That's cool, but I uh, hate for them to miss this video. Some but of them were held up because of the passcode, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, happens. that's why I tried to correct that issue this week is a couple of them got slowed down with the passcode. Mm -hmm. But um, we had your sister with us this morning. There's Jean. There's Jean. We had your sister Debbie with us the whole time this morning. Oh. Yeah, she was at Jean's study, and uh -huh. it was just awesome. Cool. So she, um, I spoke to her on the way home this afternoon, and she has a meeting. Um, so I had to rush up the So phone. she won't be here tonight live? She said she might if the meeting gets out in time. But she had a meeting. Well, I see Jean Martino go in and go out. There. Hey, Mr. Gino. Hello. Mr. Gino Hello. Martino. Good you know, when I, when I saw that uh, little ad for the, the armor, I was like, that's why he's coming to Atlanta. But that actually, is actually that, not that's the not. case. That'll that's be the time. second trip. Yeah. When are you coming to Atlanta, Gene? Uh, Lewis wants to go to Ikea, and Becky and Sarah want to go with him. Cool. Yeah, come. let's make it a thing. Yeah, we need to get together. Yep. Will you have time? Yeah, should have, we'll, we'll let you know where we're going for dinner. There's some fancy uh, wild game chef that Lewis likes that lives over there, and, and we're going to – I don't know the name of the place. I have to look it up. Okay, okay. okay. All right. Um, Fogo de Chao? Um, no, probably look it up, huh? Yeah, well, it don't matter. It don't matter. Um, Gene, I was just telling them I've made two videos and I'm going to play them right now. Welcome, everybody, to our Wednesday night panel. And uh, we will have people with us here on, on the um, Zoom. And we've got people uh, sharing it at the exact same time, synchronized on the Facebook live stream. And we welcome your comments there. And please, if you ever need to talk, just press your microphone, turn it on, and talk to me. I haven't heard Ben say anything yet, but I'm pretty sure he's out there. Uh, by the way, that's Ben Hill is the name of the is the name of the community where he's from. Okay. Got it, got it, Gene. Thank you. Um, that's not his real name. Uh, his name is Bill, and he told me I could tell you that. Hey, Bill. So when you see Ben, you have to say Bill. Okay. There you go. Got it. So Bill uh, is my new Facebook friend. We've been getting together recently. He really is enjoying the studies. We've talked about things behind the scenes when we chatted and he just left. Bye. <laughs> um, and I have a video for you all. I have two videos. Okay, so on the first, they have something in common. See if you can guess what it is, even though they're on totally different subjects. Um, the first video, I, I spliced down to about six minutes. And um, it's about, 
the top 20 eagle attacks. It's a, it's a little YouTube documentary someone made and I whittled it down to six minutes. And um, I'm gonna show that one first. And it has my snide comments written real large on every single screen, okay? So you can read what I'm saying to correct everything he's saying, mm -hmm. all right? And then the second video, it, I don't even know who, know who made it. I suspect it's someone in India because there were a lot of people that looked Indian to me in there. And it is about Jesus's return. So sort of resurrection day, last day, judgment day. Um, and I will let you view that too. And instead of typing snide comments, I actually did a voiceover kind of thing where I respond to what I'm seeing. And uh, did you use go. the Beavis or the butthead voice? I used a couple of different voices, but huh. not Beavis <laughs> or butthead. I, I kind of did uh, Keanu Reeves at one point, I think. Gee. So, uh, oh, we got to let Dale in. Come in, Dale. Dale, 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 you are just in time. Can you hear me? Oh, he's connecting. Uh, Dale is connecting. Now, okay, his mic's off, but hopefully he'll pop up in a second like Gene did, unless he's afraid to show his face. That was so cool when he had the, when he had the moon roof open. <laughs> Unbelievable. I hear you, Dale. Okay, you're just in time. I'm about to play the two videos. They're short, and uh, uh, you'll see my snide comments written in the first one as sort of subtitles, and then you'll hear me commenting and reacting on the second one. So let's go with the first one, and it's about eagle attacks, the top 20 eagle attacks. See if you can guess what's wrong with this. Here we go. Did you know that eagles are a symbol of freedom? Well, it's mainly because they have no limits to how far they can fly. Equipped with exceptional eyesight, we are going to show you 20 most amazing eagle attacks ever caught on camera. Number 20, Warthog. This warthog family was busy feeding when suddenly an eagle swooped down to attack them. When faced with the slightest confrontation, warthogs would rather run than fight back. Unfortunately for the baby warthog, it wasn't fast enough to outrun the eagle. It was pinned to the ground and dragged with one foot. The onlookers must have gone through a roller coaster of emotions. I know I would. Number 19. Wolf. The next animal to be taught a painful lesson on not walking alone is this wolf. We can't tell why this particular one is by itself. The lone wolf was walking through the snow when it sensed something unusual. At a number 18, fox. One of the worst mistakes that any animal can do is to wander off alone. This fluffy fox is about to know why. The ever watching eagle was also busy setting its eyes on this easy target. It wasn't going to waste any time. The lonely fox noticed that it had been marked as the target. Number 17, Shark. Dark. In this video, a large bald eagle slowly walked up to a shark that was stranded in the shallow waters. The right thing to do at this point is to pull the shark towards the deeper water. So, this eagle was off to a good start as it checked to see if the poor shark was still alive. These eagles look very similar and may have changed positions. I bet it's the second eagle that started feeding on the shark. The first one to arrive must be the one looking away. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. Osprey, not eagle. Number 16, Monkey. Osprey. This harpy eagle is about to fill its empty stomach. Look at it move its head in anticipation. The target here was the monkeys that were busy feeding across it. It took off almost immediately, headed straight to the target. Well, for a moment there, you might think that the eagle had missed the monkey by a whisker, but it didn't. The eagle grabbed the monkey and went ahead to slam it on the tree branch. This eagle must have been starving. It didn't waste any time digging into the monkey. Number 14, Flamingo. In this case, a giant bald eagle, 
Immediately, the eagles started to swoop down. There is not much they can do, as there was barely any space between them. The eagle was pretty confident in its hunting skill. The flamingo's attempt to save itself worked against it. There were other eagles at the scene, so this may have not been the last flamingo to go down that day. Number 13. Rabbit But we must face reality. It made it a clear target for the eagle, which immediately launched its attack on this poor rabbit. When the eagle started flying, the rabbit started running. Unfortunate for this rabbit, it wasn't able to outrun the eagle, which didn't hesitate to kill it. That eagle keeps changing species. Number 12. Seagull. Seagull. It's a seagull. Like One minute they are flying with the help of their wings, and the next minute, they are airlifted by the eagle's talons. Number 11. Dog. It is said that sometimes eagles attack dogs just to tease them, but other times, things end pretty badly. Number 10. Bear. This eagle must have some nerve to go attack such a huge creature. But, wait, size doesn't intimidate eagles. But I just can't bring myself to understand how this eagle had planned to take down this bear that was just minding its business. Clearly, it was caught by surprise. A slap on the head out of nowhere, the eagle seems to quickly realize that it had picked an impossible target. Number 9. Crocodile The eagle appeared quite relaxed, you wouldn't even know it had an agenda in mind. While crocodiles are the kings of sneak attacks, eagles seem to be giving them a run for their money. Barely minutes old, the eagle quickly picked one of the baby crocodiles before they could all get to the water. On its way, the mother crocodile tried to save her baby from the ruthless eagle. But its jump was not high enough. That must have been one devastated mother. Number 8. Lion The lion may be the king of the jungle, but the eagle has no respect for titles. After all, it is the king of the sky. It perched on a tree branch, watching this group of lioness and their cubs. Obviously waiting for the opportune time to carry a cub with it, the rain came and went, but this eagle was still there, silently watching. They seem to have learned about team hunting early enough as each cub took turns in attacking the eagle. Number 7. Mountain Goat While eagles fly with a 2 kilogram load on its feet, this particular one was strong enough. What's more interesting is that it didn't seem to be uncomfortable at all. Number 6. Snake The snake was not about to go down without a fight and it immediately took defense by spitting venom towards the eagle. The eagle didn't look moved at all. The most it did was take a step back. It is now time for the subscriber's pick of the day. Today's photo was sent to us by a subscriber wondering if an eagle does have the audacity to dare attack a leopard. That there is indeed an eagle that is brave enough to attack a leopard. After all, to dare is to do. And this brings us to number one, leopard. No animal is safe in the eyes of an eagle, but the leopard is just as ruthless as the eagle, and most especially when her cubs are involved. No mother is willing to show mercy to their child's worst nightmare. This leopard is about to do just that. The good news is that our cute cubs didn't have to stay for long without food. And that's it for today. Which of these eagle attacks threw you off your seat? Do let us know in the comments section below. Could you see and hear all that mess? But wait, there's more. Yep, I've got another video. Now, if you have anything funny or semi-exegetical to, to say about that video, if you'll make a note to yourself, we'll bring it all together after we watch the second one. See if you see any things in common here. I hear somebody, but I don't know who it is. I'm Sheila, welcome. Hey, Sheila, welcome. Hope you feel better. I'm trying. Oh, well, you hang in there. We'll talk to you in a minute. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give this a shot, and we'll go with the second video. And this one is about Jesus's return, and I make snide comments throughout. Coming at you, I hope. 
Here we go. Oh, the Bible says that's an appeal to authority. It says Jesus is coming back and oops, something's happening. Okay, Jesus is setting the sky on fire. Okay, uh, this is the trumpet section at Calcutta Junior High School for Girls. And there's a flying horse in the clouds. And guess who we have on the horse? Well, you can't see his face because it looks like it's blowing or something. Yes, this is, she's second chair. She's second chair trumpet in Calcutta Girls School, Junior High. Apparently there are a lot of people from Calcutta with lots of white horses. And Jesus kind of looked like the Pope. Oh, turn off your iPod. Dude, what's happening? Whoa. Mom, what's that? Shut up, son. I can't see. That's, that's, wow. That's a lot of white horses. Oh, you ruined his tennis game. Poor guy. Uh, selfie? Well, look at it. It's, he's, it's Jesus riding. Is this cricket or base? I think this is cricket. Okay, that's that's a lot of white. How many white horses do they have in Calcutta? Uh, that's too many to count. Okay, Jesus looks like the Pope. I mean, I don't know, but that looks kind of like the mitre. But the Pope needs a haircut, I think. Oh, so um, this is Resurrection Day. And the problem is, how do you get the lids off of all these coffins? You got billions of coffins. Well, of course, you blast them off with lightning, Jesus. Can just kind of zap them. Wait a minute. Is this Night of the Living Dead? No, it's Ezekiel. <laughs> I did not say that. <laughs> uh, okay, the dry bones are now going to walk around. Oh my. I guess they're going to put some skin on these bones shortly. There it comes. Whoa. Couldn't they have made him younger? Or prettier? Or less weird? Gee. Whoa, who is that guy? It's like Martin Sheen or something. Okay, so... I'm confused. Jesus is on the earth, and yet here comes this great white throne on the clouds to earth. Where are they coming from, Alpha Centauri? Oh, these are the books from the book of Revelation, books of everyone's deeds. That gold one will be opened later. Okay, so this is billions and billions of resurrected people, and we don't know where we are. Are we on earth? Are we... It's the final countdown. I'm sorry. That was very 80s. Uh, sorry about that. I may have to do it again. Doo -doo -doo -doo. You know that song. Ooh, who got beamed in? Is that Scotty? No, it's Pope Jesus again. Wow, he, you know, for a humble guy on earth, he just kind of turned into Liberace here. What, what, look at this. I like gold. Lots of gold. Oh, good grief. Where'd they find these actors? Don't tell me they're bringing it up one at a time. Oh, those are his sins. God has to hold. Whoa! Who's the girl burning? Ah! Jesus is zapping people. Oh, the angel has to drag him off. Next! Ah! But yeah, I have, he has to cover him up because, you know... His sins. Oh, money's bad. Money's evil. He's got to go. He's got to go. He's a goner. Well, Jesus has no compassion at all. Just, there we go. Ah, he's got one good eye. But if you cover up, oh, he he's a raper. Rapers, Jesus doesn't like rapers. Uh, uh, is that Vanessa Redgrave? Vanessa Redgrave, this is your life ah it's the office who was that ben stiller oh don't drag off ben stiller oh they're praying to other gods oh yeah he's definitely gonna have a problem you're just dragging off another one next 
Oh, oh, they get thrown down a fiery tornado into a fiery hurricane. Lots of screaming going on here. Oh, this is bad. I guess gravity still works down there. Tony Curtis! Tim Roth, I love you, honey bunny. Ah, ah, is that Grace Slick? Jeff Goldblum? There's Tim Roth again. I love you, honey. Oh, oh good. What is that? Ah! Oh, not spiders, too. And snake? No, that, that ain't right. Okay, so it looks like two galaxies are about to collide. I don't know what that means. Oh, there's some Hebrew here. So this is the book of life, I presume, from the book of Revelation, where all the good people are. That's not what the Bible says, but I'm just saying. Oh, here's a naked good person. And uh, boy, that's a long line back there. How long is this going to take? Are we going to be done by lunch? Oh, he was kind to a young man. He's helpful to youth. And he reads things and gives people Bibles. And yeah. Oh, he's getting beamed up and he looks like Ben Affleck. Here we go, Ben. You're going up. See you, Matt. See you, Matt Damon. Okay, who are we looking at now? Oh, oh, oh so this guy, is this a guy or a gal? Oh, it's her. Okay, oh, she she gets to be Miley Cyrus. That's not fair. That other guy, he didn't change at all. The one earlier, he just looked weird. Okay, Jesus is like, boy, who am I going to turn these people in? Oh, boy, he needs a little work. But he's helping... Uh, He's helping homeless people and, and injured people and oh here comes the beam. Oh he turned into no he's a Norwegian now. He turned into a Scandinavian. That seems a little racist. Well, what are all these planets swirling around? Okay, here's a guy street preaching and he convicted her hard, see? And she's getting saved and wow, she gets to beam up. It's Sally Field in The Flying Nun, I think. And who's this guy? Oh, he's covering up him, his, you know, area. Uh, I had to cover that up. Don't want to see that. Oh, he got hit in the head while street preaching. And they beat him up and left him for dead. He's a martyr. He definitely gets to fly. Flap harder. You got to flap. Flap. Well, where's he going? I thought Jesus was down there. Why is he going away from Jesus? He's going to a planet somewhere, I guess. Oh, no, he's going to hit that column if he doesn't make a left turn right here. Boy, he's going really high. Why, why are we watching him? I don't understand. Oh, he did he light up or something? That's an awful lot of Scandinavian people. Well, here's, here's someone a little more color. Okay, here come the merging galaxies. I guess the thing before was a symbol for this. Jesus is... Earthly angels are now merging with the risen human race, and they don't give a dog gone that people are being burned alive by Jesus alive right now, and, and they got spiders and snakes on them too. So I'm not sure. I think we just got beamed somewhere else. Uh, so we were on Earth. I think maybe now we're in a facsimile of the Hebrew temple. And that's not very many people, so I guess not many people get saved. Well, now we're somewhere else. Oh, this must be the new heaven and the new earth, and it's very pink. Oh, he doesn't look too sure about all of this. She's okay about it. Uh, I don't know these, look at him flapping around up there. It's uh, snowing bubbles. It's Glenda the Good Witch. Oh, he likes the sparkly stuff. Uh, he's like, do they eat, the lions eat people up here? Like, I'm um, tiger's mane, maybe. Go away. That's a leopard. Go away. Now I don't know where we are again. I mean, we're in a temple, we're on the earth, we're in the sky. I don't know where we are now. Oh, well, this is different. This must be, I don't know, I, it didn't show a giant cube, but this might be the new Jerusalem here with the streets of gold. Yeah, there's your street of gold and your purple trees. Of course, it says in the Bible that the trees are boy that's really purple oh and oh i thought money was bad i thought that guy went to hell from having money 
Anyway, we've all got all this stuff that nobody can buy or sell or use, and it's shiny. Uh, here's the river of life, and uh, here's the tree of life, and it's lilac colored. That's interesting. It's a little tree. And then the water, and we move a little farther, and it's coming from the throne, and I guess the glowing part is where Jesus or God is supposed to be, and the angels are kind of floating there, and uh, being wind blown. Here's Je I guess this is Jesus. Uh, I'm not sure. Well, yeah, he's got a hole in his hands. He's got holes in his hands. That's got to be it. Jesus said, I'm the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through... No, bring the verse back up. Bring the scripture verse back up. Why... John something. Choose life and receive Jesus today. I hope you do. And there's the moon. I'm not sure about those things. Okay. Pointing to Jesus. All right, I'm not sure I saw Jesus being pointed to, but God bless you too. Thank you. Ooh. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. Those are our two videos, and we can discuss now. When it, about, uh, about three minutes ago, Ron Mori over on Facebook, he typed, Enough, who made this farce? <laughs> what he said. What he said. Yeah, so uh, so we have two videos, and you probably have comments on both or comparisons for both, and I would love to hear them, and uh, I hope you laughed. I was trying to be funny. I don't know that I am. I make her laugh sometimes, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'm funny. Talk to me, Gino. You can't unsee that <laughs> <laughs> and what by that do you mean the second one oh <laughs> uh, i'm 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 good either way you, you can't unsee either one of them that's pretty memorable yeah um and i'm i'm back to the motivation you know what did they actually think in either one of them that they were going to accomplish i don't know Wow. What I do you just, think they were trying to accomplish with those two videos? They were trying to educate the audience. Educate. On what the facts are. Facts. These are the facts. And you need to just watch attentively, take it in, and do what needs to be done. Yeah. And um, neither of them realized that they were both non factual. I mean, they were just. I mean, especially the second one, it was a horrible, horrible um, video of acting. The first one wasn't as bad, even though they got the birds wrong. And, 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 and they got Dale's leopard wrong, too. <laughs> you know, but the, the, um, yeah, it was just so far-fetched. Looking at it now, uh, especially after doing the studies and looking at the fire and the angel, it, was just, it just seems so fake. So, I mean, if it, if it looked a little bit more real, like, I mean, we did plays and I wrote a lot of productions and whatnot, but we tried to make it as real as possible, you know, the scenes, mm -hmm. but it was like, they weren't trying that hard, were they? It was like, almost like children put it together. It was just that thing. That's what I thought. I, I was kind of, I guess my first two guesses on the first video was that, you know, Forgive the poor elementary school kid who did the best he could with the clips he, he pulled off YouTube, you know. Or then I thought, well, it's a high schooler and he's trying, and this is clickbait because what they try to do is they get as many, you know, hits um, and subscriptions as they can. And one way you do that is to say, oh, eagles attacking. But yeah. I don't know anything about eagles. I'll forget the research. I'll just put a bunch of pictures in there. Big bird, anyone, it, it, it looks like eagles. Now, this is an eagle. No, it's a peregrine falcon. This is an eagle. No, no, that's a stork. This is an eagle. No, that's a red-tailed hawk. They're on different continents. <laughs> My favorite one was how the bald eagle in sunshine in Alaska could be hunting the lions in Africa during a monsoon. I was still <laughs> pondering how great your eyesight has to be to go to the other side of the planet like that. Eagle eyes. Oh, oh. eagle eyes. Oh. And, and a leopard can't change its stripes, can it? <laughs> but, I guess a cheetah can't either. <clears throat> they don't have stripes, they have spots. <laughs> exactly. 
Poor kid didn't seem to know that. Yeah, and the thing is, I think they were convinced that they were all egos. Oh, I don't know if it mattered. It was the message. Just listen to the, what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to give and make a picture here about eagles. So it doesn't matter if I'm substituting he, the birds. But he also substituted a fake narrative because you had bird species changing. Yeah. And he would act like it was the same bird. Mm -hmm. So it was fabricated. It was completely fictitious. He was just trying to do a narration that explained what was being done, but he assumed that no one would notice that the bird species changed four times for the same bird. You know? I know. <laughs> he didn't know. He didn't know. I mean, I can understand you confusing an African fish eagle for a bald eagle because they have white head and white tail. There are many differences, though, uh, that I saw right away. So, I mean, how do you confuse a hawk, though, for an eagle? I mean, uh, he didn't know the difference uh, between a hawk and a hawk. The, in the first video, we, we have a narrative that is being presented as true, factual, and just let it stand on its own. Even though the whole concept that's being offered is filled with errors and fallacies and false things and, and you know, but but it's, it's a lot like sometimes we take scripture, we, we, we take narratives and try to prove what we want to prove. Yeah. It doesn't matter what we try to prove, we can find something and make it a narrative to do that. Mm -hmm. I think that first uh, wonderful put together three-year-old video uh, did a great job of taking a narrative and saying, I'm proving my point with the narrative. It doesn't matter if the story's true, I want to prove the point that I have, and I can use this narrative. All right. it, it seemed to me that if if I were teaching a class in high school on how not to make a documentary, I'd probably show that first one. <laughs> Just do no research and get all the animals wrong, mm -hmm. and make up stuff that's not true about the scene or about the animal. But we also live in a culture today that that narrative would be wow, presented by the right person. It's believable. It if is. You, if you up the production values and the budget, it becomes more believable. Yeah, people would believe it more. By the way, I read uh, quite a number of the comments. That video, I think, got six million views. Uh, yeah, and and the second one got twenty million views. Wow. And on that first one, that got six million views. I was reading the comments, and I'd say eighty percent of them were like, "Wow, this is great." Good job. Eagles are amazing. <laughs> they didn't know. They had no idea that most of what he said was actually false and fabricated. <laughs> they had no idea. And I think, too, I mean, um, Dale said it, that it just reminds me of where we are um, theologically, that we're preaching what we think we know and we're just trying to get a message across and we will not by any means necessary it, it feels like so it's like i'll use any scripture so to accommodate my point of view or what i'm trying to say and i'll make it happen i'll make it fit you know it's like putting a square into a round hole it's it's just i'm gonna make this fit i'm gonna use a bird and i'm just gonna say eagle and hope that the viewers don't catch it it, you know, but I think sometimes too, it's done in ignorance. I wonder if they really knew the differences. Or... I don't know. That's a really good question. Did the kid who made it or the adult or whoever, did the person who made it not know that those weren't eagles? It probably or is, if they did know, did they just not care that they weren't eagles and threw this video together as fast as they could for some sort of media assignment in the fourth grade? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because in the second well, video, I think whoever made it really believe that is the truth, that is the gospel, and what they're portraying is directly from the scripture. Yeah. I, I really believe that with all their heart, because I mean, I did something very similar in our productions and plays. So, I mean, I think, so I think, I, yeah, I don't, you know, there's no way to tell whether, particularly the first one, I mean, we don't know either, but um, particularly the first one, whether they didn't care that they were, it was obvious not an, an eagle in, in many cases, and, um, or were they just ignorant to it? I just, I don't know. 
And I think we have both categories in the world um, as it relates to the gospel and theology. We have both who some really don't know and they're ignorant and then some know the difference and, and refuse to and just, I'm gonna preach it anyway, or I, you know, I'm gonna do it for whatever reason. I guess the people who preach it for whatever reason, uh, as you say, I, I, I imagine they, they do three things. Number one, they literalize John's vision, which by the way, is a vision, okay? They literalize it as something that's actually going to happen. And the going to is the next step. You have to futurize the book of Revelation, which John specifically says is the gospel and is about Jesus and his ministry and who he is and what he accomplished. Um, uh, then the third thing you've got to do is completely misunderstand all those symbols. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you literalize, you futurize, and you misinterpret. If, the, kind of only, the only way you could make that video is if you did all three of those. I mean, okay. we're kind of misleading. Very misleading. I mean, in the second one, oh. Oh. You know, and, and judgment. So if I feed the hungry or feed the poor, then I get to wear a white robe and I get to go to heaven. You know, but if I, you know, mean or I kick the beggar, then I go to a place of torture in the fire. And it's... And it was just so literal. The character of Jesus was so different from the Gospels. It's like, here's Jesus saying, let the little children come to me. And we've got that picture. Mm -hmm. And then here's Jesus zapping people like Darth Vader. Yeah. We've got <laughs> Darth Vader Jesus. <laughs> he totally, I mean, they're the, the, so completely diametrically opposed to one another, these characters. Yeah. And it's, oh, so Jesus is going to be, Jesus is not going to be Jesus anymore. He's going he's gonna to be Darth Vader. Yeah, dressed up on that white horse and high and lifted up and and sitting on that throne. Yeah, and zapping like, people and, and having angels drag them off and drop them in a whirlwind of fire. Find your love, Jesus. So, I mean, some of you may be viewing right now and, and wondering, well, it, what about the Lake of Fire and Book of Revelation and all that? I know there are what about and what about. There are a million of them. But if you want to go back to our channel uh, on YouTube, which is Bert Gary, all lowercase, or you want to go to our Al Rock group page, there are videos on all of that stuff. Everything to do with hell, I've got like eight videos, and they're all over an hour, a little over an hour. If you want to be a student of scripture and realize how wrong we have it, that would be a good place to start. Well, I think in both videos, um, one element that I think is important is not content, which is important, but I think presentation is very valuable in both videos. Not the content of the video, but the presenting of what one sees. I think that's what swings people to sit and watch the video and think, is this a real possibility? It's like I'm looking at Patricia, who is sitting on a beach with waves crashing behind her. Presentation, even though I know where she Hey, Bert. <laughs> but, but my point is it, presentation because it looks real. Yes. yes, yes. I mean, so, 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 so where I am right now sitting next to Bert, so my screen, my background screen is giving the impression that I am on the beat somewhere. So Ron on Facebook said, you know, what's, what's, what's my, your background? What's my background? So, yeah. you know, it's the Caribbean island on the beach with the waves crashing, but I'm right here in my dining room sitting next to Bud. In a very cold Atlanta, Georgia. Right. So it gives the impression. So I think it's the same kind of thing. We, we, we give people what, what we want to, what we want them to know. I think it's about education. What, what, what's the message? What are we trying to convey in the video? What, what, what is that, the person who, who made that video, what is he trying to do? Get people to subscribe? There's something behind it where he was willing to go to whatever it takes to make that video, whether it's numbers, you know, followers, subscribers, or whatever. I don't know how all the Yeah, there's an stuff. ulterior motive. There's some motive behind it. And the same thing with the second video. There is a, a, a motive in what are they trying to convey? If I and who are they trying to people, attract? Who's yeah. their audience? 
But 20 million people saw that? 20 I million wonder people. of 20 million, how many believed exactly what they said? Or was amening and yes, hallelujah, or yes, I'm living right. Don't you think most of them did? Perhaps. I mean, it would the be sad accepted. if the majority of them. Go ahead, Gene, sorry. I was saying present company accepted. We weren't applauding. Yeah. Bert, the part that you left out, and, I, and I, that's not a criticism, is there some 1-900 number that you dial after watching these things? Or is it the clickbait that gets them money? Um, you know, what do they get out of this other than some narcissistic thing about, oh my gosh, my video went viral. I'm famous now. Well, I, I think the first one's definitely clickbait by a, a young person who it sounded like a male voice. It sounded like he couldn't be more than 20. He had to be younger than 20. His voice had changed, so maybe he's a teenager. And I, I think probably he's making videos to, to attract as many clicks as he can because they're monetized. But, but I, I don't know how he got $6 million. He He really hit the jackpot there, you know? I don't, I don't know how much money you make with $6 million hits, but it's got to be a lot. He, he got rich on a really, really poorly made video full of misinformation. How many views on the first clip? First one, six million. Second one, 20 million. Wow. So I'm, I'm, I'm hearing uh, what, what motivates him or what, is, what has motivated him in making this video is, is you know, uh, uh, like almost narcissistic. You know, it's, it's a thing that for myself to feel empowered and the more clicks I get, the more I feel empowered. And maybe, maybe there's a uh, something with the new generation where uh, entertainment is more important than accuracy. So it's it's entertaining. You watch the video and you see all kinds of birds doing wild stuff with alligators and cheetahs and stuff. And you know, it's it's it, it, Of course, the, some of the clips that he used were such poor pixelated quality that, you know, I guess there was nothing he could do about that because he got them that way. But um, it's amazing to me as poorly it made it as it is and it's how inaccurate it is and, and how, how poor the pixels are on many of the clips. I can't believe he got 6 million hits. You know, that, that goes to show you that, you know, if you do something of quality, it doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna get a lot of clicks. But if you don't do something of quality, you might have a better chance. And I wonder how many people realized that there were not a lot of eagles in that clip. I think they clicked on it because it said eagles. Well, there were, were a lot interested. of there were a lot of eagles. He just he never named well he 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 named one of them correctly once, and then he misnamed some that were eagles. Okay, mm. he got the harpy eagle right. But then he threw in three or four other eagles that were different, and an different. osprey that were different, and he didn't distinguish between them. Yeah. So does that mean he can't see the difference, or he just didn't care because he was putting together something he wanted to be fun and entertaining? Yeah. I don't think accuracy and learning was on his priority list. If it were, he'd have done more research, and he wouldn't have called all those animals wrong names. It was really, when I saw that, I realized maybe there's a lesson in this. So I went looking for, you know, a, a, a sort of a millennial, a theological millennial approach to, to Jesus. And I saw that one. I said, oh, that's perfect. They, that, those go together like peanut butter and jelly. That's the way I felt about it anyway. And as, and as poor and amateurish as these are, it raises the question, like we said, you know, Dale's comment. They, uh, they have a real high-end budget, and they really have nice camera production values, better graphics, and, and they have a real motive to manipulate what they can pull off. Mm -hmm. You can get 20 million people to watch that piece of crap. Yeah, and I don't know who produced it. I didn't look on purpose. I just didn't want to know. Yeah. I, I didn't want I didn't want to bring that into this discussion. Yeah. I just wanted to show it like it was. And by the way, no one said a single blessed word in that video, which made it possible for me to do the overlay on the narration. But just think of what a $20 million budget and a, and a mainstream movie that then they market to churches. 
whether it's that that god awful Russell Crowe uh, Noah movie, yeah, or or uh, Gods and Generals, whatever that remake of. We were just talking about this a little while ago with a buddy. You know that remake of the Ten Commandments is so terrible, but yeah. hey, it's a great Christian religious film. Get your church people to come out and support it because we want to support God. And and they did that with the with Mel Gibson's movie. And, oh and my gosh, too. yeah, I and endured that once. I, I'm afraid I saw it more than once because I was teaching on what was wrong with it. But um, I think that what happens is is that. The directors are driven by producers who want to be happy and it's sort of like the bible publishers you know telling the scholars no it doesn't mean that <laughs> you know how can bible publishers who don't know crap about the scriptures tell bible scholars no we won't print that but they do and i think that what happens with the producers is is that they they want mel or whoever will well, pay for his own but they want the director to do certain things and they want the screenwriters to do certain things. And if they come up with something that doesn't sound very familiar to them, they'll want them to go back to the familiar, even if it's wrong. And, and so what you, what you get is you get a lot of Jesus movies out there where no one consulted very many scholars. Like the Left Behind series. The Left Behind series is the perfect example of using no scholars and using completely bankrupt and ridiculous ridiculous scriptural interpretation they weren't even literate are, are you saying those 15 books he wrote are not accurate <laughs> <laughs> you said it dale <laughs> i i said the only thing the man did was make money i've said that for years that's, why I, that's all i ever said about it <sighs> now something else about these two video clips that i think is a reflection of where we are theologically in the church today. You can take the most shallow ideas, knowledge which is not based on fact, first eagles, osprey, you name it, different animals. And then the second one is uh, a reproduction of what some people think the end's gonna be like for people who are good or who are bad. And, and the, the theology in that is so, shallow it reflects i think our understanding of theology today in the institution not the church but the institution you take these mega church preachers they don't preach any substance but people are attracted to it and this last video it's it doesn't have substance but it will attract people how many million it, it will attract people how many million it's eye candy that's amazing i know yeah is that ganasar back there is that ganasar Hey, Dale, is that Genosar? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for putting that up. It makes me feel good. I thought you said Ken Star. <laughs> and I thought, where did that come from? I apologize. This, that, this is on the Syrian side. It's a it's a kibbutz. <laughs> oh, that's the Syrian side? Well, that's Engev then. Is that Engev? Yeah, we stayed there one year. Okay, okay. So oh, that's fake news, is what you're saying, Dale. You're not there right now. I'm, I'm, near where, I'm close by where Patricia is. And, you know, she's got the waves. And I've got just the mellow sea. You know, you, know, you can believe to, what you want to. I, I, can, I I've got to wooden go to, paneling. I need to go find uh, a, a, a. I need to take like maybe a, a screenshot of those people burning in hell and put it behind me, <laughs> back here. You know, smoke and screaming and. I, I need to hear what's behind Sheila's eye rolling. It's it's just we can't wait to hear Sheila. Come on, Sheila, it's all you. I bet she is about to give us an earful too. As soon as we <coughs> have her, she'll come. She'll come to the rescue. What about well, it? Sheila? I just kind of sat back and watched everything and listened to the <clears throat> narrating. Now I didn't catch much of the. The uh, the leopards and the eagles and all that. I came in a little later, but if you sat and you listened to everything that was being said and you watched all the pictures, I wasn't too sure where I was. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. Um, yeah, there is a dark side to that that makes you. Kind yeah. Of 
Yeah, too. very dark side. And um, I, I know I wasn't, I wasn't trying to erase with my humor. I was uh, trying to, to, I was trying to get us through it. Right, uh, right. But, but I didn't want to erase the fact that it's really dark. It's, uh, I don't, it's, it's macabre. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, if you were going to put it on YouTube for entertainment, it was entertainment. You know, I don't think it was supposed to be entertainment. I, I think it either. was supposed to be a serious message that you need to watch this and this is going to happen. If you don't do something with your life sooner or later, this is what's going to happen to you. I think it was supposed to be well, a true. very serious so message. So this is what happens when law judges and there is no grace. Right. And that's what they believe. So they have erased Jesus's ministry, his life, his words, and his death, and his resurrection. They've erased them and don't know it. Yeah. Well, then I, I think what you just said, what I hear that you just said, Bert, was like a lot of theology preached. If you don't turn, you burn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So to I, you, I think that. The, the video we saw is, is a uh, justification of that, you know, the, 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 the bad who don't repent, who don't do good, who don't, this is their end result. And if you do good, if you, if you help a needy or whatever, then you're carried off to this final resting place with the angels. And, and uh, it's, it's kind of like how people look at the book of Revelation as just being a threat. You know, it's a threat that if you don't toe the line, keep the faith, you're going to end up in hell. And this video to me reminds me of the same thing. You know, good people go one place, bad people go another. And and maybe that's why it's, it's got so many views because people resonate with that. And that's I actually continue to be taught in a lot of predominantly conservative churches today. Yeah. And all the angels were like young girls. I told you it was it was the trumpet section from the from the Calcutta Junior High School Girls Corps, our <laughs> girls band. I told you who they were. And then the perception that angels have wings, too. You know, but even when I realized, yeah, when did that happen? you know, Gabriel and Michael were, were, who were male angels, and I don't want to misgender anyone, but, you know, yeah, it's like, why would, why do we choose little girls? In our place, too, we did. You know, young young girls to be the angels. The boys never was they, they never were angels, and I'm not sure where that comes from. Well, look, if angels can't reproduce, what do they need to be male or female for? I haven't figured that one out either. <laughs> Gabriel, Michael, Raphael. Yeah, you know, male name, name. So I I don't know where that where that comes from, but it has to do with. I don't know, maybe innocence, maybe girls that more innocent than boys. I, Boy, I, we are I, way I out of the limb. I don't know. <laughs> you know, what, you know <laughs> that, that, that they tend to be more pretty than hands. I don't know. I'm, I'm asking the question here. I'm just wondering why, why do we go stick to little girls as angels and not males as angels? Like men. Well, we talked about this back at Christmas, yeah. and, you know, and, and some and you asked a similar question, and I said, well, I think for the children's plays, um, you know, most of the characters are male, you know, the wise men, the shepherds, whatever, are yeah. traditionally given to boys, yeah. but they started to give it to girls too. I, I wouldn't be surprised if some of the wise men were wise women, but um, I think that you. They used to give the angel jobs only to girls, right? but I don't know. That's why I don't know if that's why the trumpet section at the junior high school in Calcutta <laughs> is all girls. I'm not quite sure well, about that. I, I vote for wise women. <laughs> Let's change that. Well, you know, you she to, uh, you gotta have manly Let's shepherds and manly friends. wise men. And you gotta be manly people and wise you know. men. Come on now. I'm just saying, <laughs> in a patriarchal culture that wrote scripture, it's manly men. Yeah, I know. I hear you, Bailey. I, I know. Yeah. That's just facetious here, but yeah, it's just something to think about, though. Why do we do it? I mean, where does it come from? I'm curious about where does that come from? You know, so I don't know. Anyway, Kia, what about you? Talk to us, Kia. 
They don't want to put little boys in dresses. <laughs> or little boys don't want to be put in dresses. <laughs> you have conservative churches and they're not going to put their little boys in dresses. Yeah, Think about yeah. it. Yeah, well, yeah but right. they put the wise men in a bathrobe. What's the difference? <laughs> I had a, I wore a bathrobe. <laughs> Thanks be to God you did. <laughs> <laughs> and what do preacher robes look like? Yeah, really. Oh, Lord. Jesus wore robes. Yep, he did. And, and sandals with long hair. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what about it, Kia? You got something you want to uh, um, step in here and, and share? Well, I just, I, I found it. I, I, unlike Sheila, didn't think it was very dark. I thought it was very comical. Um, however, I did notice that it kind of left a question, where do people with ethnicity go? Because there was no one like me there. That's so we, we don't go to heaven. We don't get raised up. Uh-uh. No, no, notice that there was a transformation that when you went from one life to the spiritual, you were transformed. That you may have been a person of color now, but you're going to be created and transformed and not a person of color, which I find that to be very offensive. Uh, yeah, well, it's, uh, you did note that that very dark fellow turned into someone that looked like he came from Helsinki. <laughs> yeah, all the and, people who were people of color, you know, once they got saved and washed in the blood, they were they were European Americans. They turned so white. came Aryans. Yeah, so, no, so they were washed in the blood and washed all what's their melon in the blood. Me? Jesus, what's going to happen to me? <laughs> That's what I'd be saying. You and Berta look alike. Bert, what do I do? I don't want to get left. <laughs> Apparently, Jesus is coming from Calcutta. I don't. I on a white horse. Oh yeah. my god! I yeah. guess we'll just have to be at the back of the line. And, and, and the line's pretty long when it's I, about. I've been to the back of the line long <laughs> enough. I'm not going to the back of the line anymore. I'm sorry, Jesus. I'm sorry. I'm not going to the back anymore. I hear that. <laughs> I, I hear paid that. my dues. Oh, uh -uh. Yeah, so there's 700 billion people who've lived on the planet over the last, you know, half million years. And, and, and they're all standing there. And, and Jesus is zapping them slowly, one at a time. I just what a picture of misery. Just people standing there forever, waiting to be zapped. I know. I wonder how much, yeah, how long it took to make that, to do that clip or play, whatever that is. Too long. And how much money they spent on that. You know, the production value really wasn't that good compared to what we do today in, in Hollywood. How but old is it? I don't know. I didn't look at any of that. Mm -hmm. I, it, has to be, it has to be India. It has to be India because they've got a got kind of a Bollywood over there, you know. Um, uh, they call it Bollywood, and I think that's probably where it came from. They make a lot of different kinds of movies, and some of the movies I've showed you in the past are were made in India. I, they make a lot of religious films over there. Well, predominantly the Christian culture in India is ultra conservative. Hmm. I have friends here who grew up there members of their family passes and he says they're just ultra conservative. Yeah. So I can mm -hmm. see where that culture in that video fits together well. Yeah. You know, earlier you were saying, you know, that as long as you <clears throat> took care of the beggar and you took care of this one and you took care of that one, that you automatically get your white robe and go up. Looks that way. But if you think about it, if that got in the wrong person, if that got to the wrong person watching it, they would say themselves, oh, all I got to do is be nice and I'll get my white robe. But you, you got to have your heart in it, first yeah. of all, to want to take care of somebody. You know what I mean? You know what I'm trying to no. say? Yeah. It, it had two ways. It's not about work, is what I hear you say. Yeah, and we, yeah, don't, yeah. we don't earn any, we, we don't do these things to manipulate Jesus into liking us. Yeah. Right, no, but some people think so. Yeah, because, I know they no, do, no, but that what? negates yeah. what Jesus did. 
if I give to the poor, if I do this, you know, check the box, then I'm good. You know, I don't have to go to church anymore. I don't have to go do anything. How liberating I to be a really. person who can serve and do good things without having to worry about whether you're being noticed or not. Mm -hmm. The Pharisees who cared about junk like that. Yeah. He said, Jesus, yeah. you got your reward. You got seen. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. if you want to be seen doing good stuff, mm -hmm. make sure there are people around when you do it. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, you want to make sure God's watching. Mm -hmm. it, it's they're playing a game. It's a game. Game is a religion is a game uh, that you never win. It's you're guaranteed to lose because it defeats the whole idea that God reached out to us, and it didn't involve what we did. While we were still sinners, he died for us. Not when we cleaned up our act and, and, and helped people on the street. Helping people on the street is an expression of thank you. I think repentance is a response to grace. And I think I think service is also a response to grace. Yeah. Um, th not the other way around. Service doesn't mm -hmm. earn you grace. You know? Yes. Yes. Repentance doesn't earn you grace. It's the other way around. Repentance is triggered by a preemptive strike of grace from God. For something I have said for many, many years, God loves you, and there is nothing you can do about that. There is nothing you can do about that. There isn't. Yeah. And, and, and you, you or as, or as Robert Capon said, um, Jesus died on the cross and said, there, now make me take that back. Which is a similar thing uh, I, I hear you saying, Dale. And, and I think the video just reaffirms that false information old enough is belief. Yeah. Yeah, right. so if, if you've got TV preachers with, uh, on TV saying the same junk over and over and over and over and over again, uh, you know, um, familiarity is credibility. Absolutely. Yeah, long enough. Yeah, many times. And, yeah, it'll probably and, that, and that's why it's so challenging when you start confronting familiarity because you're confronting familiarity with fact and truth scripturally. And people don't want to buy into the truth scripturally because they are so familiar with the opinion of what somebody has told them often over the years. Well, most people think they've got the Christianity thing figured out a long time ago. I've got nothing left to learn here. Mm -hmm. There's nothing more to see. Yeah. And uh, they have no idea how misled they've been by the people in their tradition. And uh, we, we hope to help change that. Yep. That's, why, that's why we do what we do here. I don't want to speak for anybody else individually on our, on our panel here on Wednesday nights, but it seems to me that at least uh, my perception is, is that we hope by our honest look at scripture and faith to make a difference and maybe put a dent in this bulldozer of, a, of an anti-gospel that has been uh, pushing along now my entire life, uh, seemingly uh, without losing steam. Uh, how how more wrong can you have your faith when you think that salvation is something you have to do? How 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 utterly utterly wrong can you have what salvation means? Um, but it's hard, Bert, when you've heard that same message as you said I know. all of your I mean all of your life, and to hear something for the first or second or third time. You're still trying to figure out what, what, wait, you're still in shock. You're not even really in place to hear it, really. It's like, what did you just say? That doesn't sound right. Repeat that again, see if you say it again, or come back again next time. It's hard to hear. It, yeah, now, see, it, it we, takes we, a long time. We've got a lot of tapes in there that are playing. So, for example, so when, when uh, you know, from the perspective of the evangelical bubble, when you say saved by faith, okay. What they hear when they hear the word faith is, I have to generate faith. Mm -hmm. I have to show that I have faith in Jesus by mm -hmm. praying the sinner's prayer or repenting or changing my life. 
Now, faith is something you do. Yeah. Okay. Let me tell you what faith is. It's trusting what Jesus already did and letting go of proving anything. Yeah. It takes me back to people that are dying and they're on their last breath and their family members are saying, just, just, say. just speak the word. Speak you know? the word. Don't say, I accept don't, Jesus. Yeah, don't, but don't use the word death. You know, just speak life. Yeah. Just speak life and it's going to yeah. happen. And then they die the next minute and then they never got a chance to say goodbye or I love you or whatever it is. Or this is what I want at the end of my life. This is how I want to die. Yeah, the pro- you, you get, you're robbed of that opportunity. You are. And because as of a, the message. As a chaplain, I saw that a lot. I saw that a great deal. Probably 75% of the people that I visited had been strongly influenced theologically by the prosperity gospel, which is a whole nother problem than the one we're talking about. There are two theologies out there. Um, one is the evangelical bubble and the other is the prosperity uh, tragedy that we have out there. And the thing about the prosperity thing is, is that it robs people mm-hmm. of, ex- uh, of fully experiencing life's best moments and, and worst moments and, and death. And, and it's a part of that. And you don't get to say goodbye because you're believing and receiving and believing and receiving miracle, miracle, miracle. And then when the person dies, Everybody screams and goes crazy because they didn't think it was going to happen, you know. But we said all the right magic words. Speak believe in and receive it. Speak those things. Yep. Yeah. 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 I think a good example of that. It could happen, and we believe that. What's the difference between that and, and a Harry Potter incantation? It's believing in magic wands and magic words. I'm um, sorry, Dale, go ahead. I was just thinking when you said that verse that a good example of basically name it, claim it, pie in the sky uh, over this pandemic are these pastors who refuse any way of being protected with a vaccine because they're protected by Jesus. It doesn't matter what's going to happen, they're protected. And many of those are in coffins today because of their, and they would say, some would say their lack of faith. It's not a lack of faith, it's a lack of intelligence. Well, why don't they stop wearing seatbelts? Well, you know, I, I, uh, that's I, a faithless act. If, you, if Jesus is your seatbelt, you don't need to wear one. I know. I understand that. It, it's I don't condition. want to pay the price. What, Sheila? I said, I don't want to have to pay the price of not wearing a seatbelt. Yeah. Well, that's a risk. I mean, we're talking about risks here in a world where things are not guaranteed and where right. I, uh, I was just know. trying to choke. That's all. No, no, I, you're right. I'm agree. Oh, I, I agree with what you just said, Sheila. You're right. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, yeah. But I agree with what you say, Dale. I mean, if we have this great big faith and everything, then we can just get in the car and go and not worry about, you know, if we get hit, Jesus is going to hold us back and we're not going to get hurt. But that. <clears throat> I just, I have a lot of faith in God, but sometimes being truthful with you, I don't want to test it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's very honest of you to admit. I mean, I'm sorry, but. (laughs) It's it's true. I don't want to test it either. Because, you know, I mean, it's like Jesus said when, when he was told that Galileans were killed by Pilate, um, you know, and. They were trying to trap him and get him to say that, well, if they were killed by Pilate, then they would probably deserve what they got. They were probably bad people, which would have put him in a tough political situation with his own population that trusts him and follows him. And then, if he, and then he said if he railed against Pilate, then he would be bringing up the ire of the Romans. It was sort of a trap, sort of like paying taxes to Caesar. And he said, you think that that happened to them because they were worse sinners? Is God punishing people? He said, no. I mean, stuff happens. Tragedies happen. Accidents happen. Um, and the whole point of the gospel is not that when Jesus is around, there aren't any problems. The point is that when there are problems around, Jesus experienced them too. And he's one who knows what it feels like. And therefore, he is one that can help. He, he doesn't fix everything, but he sure can help get you through it. Did he say something about not jumping off the top of the temple one time? I think. Testing God. Yeah. I vaguely remember something about that. Um, yep, yep, yep. And if the prosperity gospel 
uh, has anything to say to the cross, it's that, well, Jesus, you know, just didn't, didn't have enough faith, mm. you know, because that wouldn't have happened if he had. He'd have come down off the cross and everybody would have come him. down off the cross. Yeah, that's right. And, and uh, it's, 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 it's horrible it, to think about how many millions of people don't see how fundamentally contradictory that is, you know, this gospel in the Bible and this gospel that's prosperity, quoting scripture out of context. They, they hunt and pick and cherry pick those verses to make it sound like they, they are, they're Christians or they're scriptural, mm -hmm. but their gospel is, is sort of an anti-gospel too. We got two anti-gospels dominating our culture. So what happens to a person's theology, I guess is a good word for it, when they've named it and claimed it and almost defamed it, but it doesn't work? What happens when you don't win? Mm -hmm. What happens to your theology yeah, when you don't win? The will of God. That, that, that's the cr a common thing. If not you the will of God. For it and then it doesn't happen. Or you. And you didn't have enough faith. Or it wasn't God's will to heal you. So See, that's, 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 their, or, yeah. that's, their, that's their little fire escape out the back. It's, you know, mm -hmm. well, either it, was, it wasn't God's will or you didn't have enough faith. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like. Can you, can you imagine what kind of awful God we would have if he was really that fickle that you just have to ask him just right? I mean, the way that we grovel and play games like, I, I, maybe if I pull the arm harder on the one arm band, it, it will pay off. So you try different techniques to man manipulate mm -hmm. God into giving you what you're praying for. Yeah. And uh, we gotta get past the games. And get real yeah. and remember that the best way in my opinion for us to see god is to see the face of jesus not that not that liberace character laced in gold that we saw zapping people with no compassion in that film but the one that we know mm -hmm. you know the one that we know the from merciful, scripture gracious loving caring courageous serving powerful preaching touching people's lives, changing the world. Yeah, that's that's the guy right there. Yeah. Uh, I think one of the key words you just said for it was um, manipulation. Yeah. Manipulating God and then uh, prosperity preachers standing in the pulpit manipulating people. Well, the whole point of the prosperity gospel comes from the thing that it came out of. You know, it's it didn't come from scripture. It came from Ernst Holmes, and and then it went into Norman Vincent Peale, and he tried to sort of syncretize it with Christianity, which didn't work, except that the book sold 10 million copies in the first few years. Um, that, but the this 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 is a this is a they actually Ernest Holmes actually wrote about how to manipulate the God force, and he didn't mean that ironically. I mean, the whole point is the God, the God force is not a person. It's a force that with your thoughts, you can manipulate the spiritual world and the spiritual world can give you what you want in the material world. You don't need Jesus for that. You just learn how to manipulate the God force. Completely impersonal. God is not a person. God is a force that you can manipulate with your thinking. And manipulate, they use that openly you know mm -hmm. and i'm like really when did manipulation become a good thing yeah we are out of time um you all may have heard um i know we don't i don't want to go on a whole lot because we've gone over time but i, I just remember that um we're still praying for sheila remember that um, you may or may not know that uh kimberly died the pianist at uh our, our sister church, Mount Gilead, down the road. Um, she, um, her, her heart gave out um, yesterday. So prayers for that family. Um, and if you, Sheila, how are you doing? Well, <clears throat> I've got to go back to the doctors the 14th, and we're going to look into a cardiologist. Um, 
the COVID attacked all the, the uh, arteries in the heart. So it's all got, I've got like a congested heart right now. Yeah. Oh. So um, we're taking, and plus the breathing, I can't breathe. So I'm on um, prednisone for uh, 30 days. So after the 14th, I'll know more what they, they're going to do. That code is so nasty. Uh, you know, I, everybody thinks it's about your breathing, but it's really about your heart. That's the real scary yeah. thing about it is it's it's a pulmonary disease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's well, I'll tell stuff. you, when I went in on that Monday morning, you want to talk about faith. Mm. That's where it came in. Yeah. Uh, my granddaughter, Coda, is the one that called the ambulance and all that. And, of course, she's young, she's scared, and she kept saying, you know, Nana, you, you can't die on me. And I said, well, I don't, I don't believe I'm going to die. I really didn't. I mean, I'm going to say I wasn't scared. Mm -hmm. But I said, I said I'm not going to die. And she said, well, you don't know that. And I said, yeah, I kind of feel that. I'm yeah. not gonna die. Yeah. I said it's uh, something my body has to go through, and I said we'll get through it. And I said, and with the faith of God and the grace of God, we're gonna be here to talk about it. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just gonna take a little time. Yeah. We're thinking of you, Sheila, and we miss you. Pardon? Times that we're she thinking of you, and we miss you. Oh. And, um, we're praying for you, for your Thank you. healing and recovery. I'm glad you felt strong enough yeah. to be with us tonight. It always makes me feel good to see you here, especially since I know you haven't been feeling well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. I love being here. This is family. Mm -hmm. Oh, bless your heart. She just said what well, I love to hear. We love you, Sheila. We are family. Our, oh, our Wednesday yeah. night panel is not just a panel. We're a family, mm -hmm. and we're going right. to be that way. As long as we can, yes. we're going to share that with one another and we're going to keep doing this. Thank you for helping us bring the true gospel of scripture um, out onto the uh, Internet like this. And hopefully with Facebook and YouTube, well, we're, we're changing people's lives. It seems like to me every month or so, somebody new is coming around like Bill, you know, Ben Hill, mm -hmm. you know, and it's nice to see one by one people coming around. By the way, John, uh, with, um, who you all know. Um, Hendron. Hendron, yeah. John um, has been diagnosed with prostate cancer, so he's he's in a world of uh, hurt right now, and um, he asks your prayers. And he's on dialysis. He's yeah. on dialysis, too. And um, in fact, they're wondering now if, if it was, wasn't the cancer that caused his need for dialysis, mm -hmm. and they just didn't know it at the time. Same thing happened to Donna. Donna? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I want Dale to... was with us. Thank you, Dale, for coming on Sunday and being with us. Yeah, Dale drove all the way with Elaine to uh, Atlanta and uh, joined us for worship on Sunday. We had dinner, lunch afterward, and had a ball. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you all. We enjoyed it. Yes, it was really good. He, he served communion, and, and mm -hmm. uh, it was great. It was great. Good company. Well, the Lord bless and keep every single one of y'all. I love you. Please uh, come back and see us again soon. Uh, we've got um, Gene Martino's uh, church service is right after ours. So we're at 10 o'clock Eastern, and then he's at 11 o'clock Eastern. And, and uh, then for the, his, his Wednesday morning study, um, we had Jonah join us, uh, and, who, and we had Debbie join us. So, we're get, mm -hmm. and, uh, so we've got some people hooked to us who are getting into his study, too. And I, I think there are more people watching he, that don't say anything. But at any rate, uh, on Wednesday mornings at 11 o'clock Central, uh, excuse me, 11 o'clock Eastern, 10 o'clock Central, join me uh, as I join Gene for this Bible study at Lafayette United Methodist Church, where you have a staff person who's got COVID now, right? Did y'all lock your office down? We did last week. She's, she's recovering now and back with us, but really taking it slow. She's just still weak. Yeah. Yeah. Well, y'all take care of yourselves. I've really enjoyed it tonight. Give our regards to Becky and to Bye. Bye. Love y'all. JB, Sheila. Bye bye. 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 Dale. Bye. Dave, Bye. Take care of yourselves. Bye bye. Bye. Bye y'all. Bye y'all. Bye y'all. Bye, yeah. bye, 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 Ron. Good to see you today.